exam 2022 question number 46 let box t denotes the greatest integer less than or equal to t the number of points of discontinuity of the function fx box x square minus 3x plus 2 for x in the closed interval 0 comma 4 is now we need to input this answer let's observe what is happening with this box box function over here okay now if t is my box function okay this means this will take the value greatest integer less than or equal to t that means if i take 0.1 its value is going to be 0 if i take 0.2 its value is going to be 0 the moment i make it 1 its value is going to be 1 so you see between 0 from 0 till 1 before 1 it is going to take value 0 and at 1 it is going to change value change its value to 1 so we will have a jump at 1 similarly we will have a jump at 2 3 and so on so in fact the greatest integer function when it is defined on an interval whether it is open or closed if it is defined on this interval for example 0 comma 4 its points of discontinuity will be all the integer points 0 1 2 3 4 4 okay this is the basic behind solving this question also one more thing now the box under consideration in this question is a quadratic function okay now let's see what we can do with it so fx is equal to x square minus 3x plus 2 okay first of all let us try to factorize this into linear factors okay so we can write it as and if we simplify this will be and this is going to be okay so we have the box function x minus 1 into x minus 2 now whenever we have a box function like this for example x minus a this becomes box of x minus a okay this is a rule for box functions now it means that this function will have discontinuities same number of discontinuities as this function okay so my box x minus 1 is equal to box x minus 1 my box x minus 2 is equal to box x minus 2 Now on this interval 0 to 4 there are five integer points 0 1 2 3 4 4 so box x minus 1 will have five points of discontinuity similarly box x minus 2 will have five points of discontinuity okay now whenever we have product of linear factors product of linear factors enclosed inside boxes the number of discontinuities the number of discontinuities will be sum of discontinuities of respective you know box function of linear factors so over here we have two linear factors x minus 1 x minus 2 this has five discontinuities this has five discontinuities so 5 plus 5 equals to 10 so we have 10 points of discontinuity now this concept can be extended to a cubic function if it can be factorized into three linear factors and so on iit jam question number 20 47 okay let us start let e be the area of the region bounded by the curves y equals to x square and y equals to a root x x is greater than or equal to 0 we need to find 30 e rounded off to one decimal place okay whenever we have to find out the area of the region bounded by two or more curves we need to find out the point of intersection of the curves so let us do that i have this curve and this curve so let us equate the y values so we have 8 root x is equal to x square Now you square both the sides. 64x equals to x4. So x4 minus 64x equals to zero. X x cube minus 64 equals to zero. X equals to zero or x cube equals to 64. So x equals to zero or x equals to four. Now both are admissible because x is greater than or equal to zero. So we have two points of intersection. Okay. Now let's see how these curves are drawn on a two-dimensional plane. So let's try to draw. Okay. this is x axis this is y axis okay let's try to draw y equals to x square so we have y equals to x square so it will pass through 0 comma 0 when x equals to 1 the value of the y will be 1 then when when we put x equals to 2 it will be 4 you know so uh, All right. So this is my curve y equals to x square. Now 
we want to draw y equals to 8 root x. Now, when x equals to 0, it will again pass to 0, 0. At x equals to 1, it will be 8, you know. So, actually, this y equals to 8 root x, this is going to lie above this curve. This is what we wanted to do. Which curve lies above which curve, okay? So, y equals to x square lies below y equals to 8 root x. So, you know, my value will be somewhere over here and my graph will be, you know, something like this. And then these are going to intersect and, you know, this will be the value. Yahan par x equals to 4 hoga. Okay. So, this is the region which I want to calculate. Here, here. This is the region E. Now, whenever we have a curve f greater than or equal to g on an interval a, b, okay, whenever we have f greater than or equal to g on an interval a, b, the area will be found by calculating the value of the integral a to b, f minus g, dx, okay. So, let's try to do it over here. Here, my 8 root x is greater than or equal to x square. This is greater than or equal to x square. So, the area, the E, will be evaluated as 0 to 4 f minus g, 8 root x minus x square dx. Okay. Now, let's try to calculate this. So, we will be calculating 0 to 4, 8 root x minus x square dx. This will be 0 to 4, 8 x raised to the power half minus x square dx. Okay. So, we will integrate it. It will be 8 x raised to the power 3 by 2 divided by 3 by 2 minus x cube upon 3 and the limits will be imposed from 0 to 4. So, this will be 8 times 2 by 3 x raised to the power 3 by 2 minus x cube upon 3. We go from 0 to 4. So, this is going to be 16 upon 3 x raised to the power 3 by 2 minus x cube upon 3. We go from 0 to 4. Now, we put the upper limit. So, 16 by 3 4 raised to the power 3 by 2 minus 4 raised to the power 3 by 3. And then when we put the lower limit, as the lower limit is 0, this is going to be 0, this is going to be 0. So, this is my final expression for area. So, let us simplify this area. This is 16 by 3. This is 2 raised to the power 2 minus 64 by 3. This is 16 times 8 by 3 minus 64 by 3. So, this is 128 by 3 minus 64 by 3, which is 62 by 3. This is the value for E. Now, please pay attention. We don't have to calculate E. We have to calculate 30 E. So, we have to calculate 30 E, which will be 30 times, this is 64 by 3, 30 times 64 by 3, which is going to be 640. So, this is 640. This is IIT Jam 2023, question number 48. I have this as the production function. Wage rate is 4. Rental rate is also 4. So, if this is my production function, my cost function is 4L plus 4K. Now, in order to find out the cost function, this is the ISO cost line, sorry. What I need to do is MPL by MPK will be basically K by L is equal to 4 by 4, which is basically equal to 1. So, what I will get, I'll get K is equal to L. So, if I get K is equal to L, Y is equal to K into K. So, Y is equal to K, which is equal to L. So, what will I get my cost function as 4Y plus 4Y? So, that's 8Y. So, the cost function is 8Y. Now, the marginal cost is nothing but DC DY, which is equal to 8. This is what the majority of you have said, which is absolutely perfect. 2023, question number 49. Why hat, this is the estimated regression equation that we have using a large sample. The 95% confidence interval of the coefficient of x, that is the regression coefficient, is 0.26 to 6.14. Now, the 95% confidence interval is basically the estimated plus minus 1.96 standard error of beta hat. Okay, now you can take any one of the two. I know that the regression coefficient estimate is 3.2. 3.2 plus minus 1.96 into standard error of beta hat. So basically, 3.2 minus 1.96 standard error of beta hat has to be equal to the lower, which is 0.26. So now from here, I can find out standard error of beta hat is equal to 3.2 minus 0.26 divided by 1.96. Calculate this, this will be 2.94 divided by 1.96. So, an estimate, so the standard error of the estimated coefficient will be 1.5. This will be my answer. R square is not used in this. They are only trying to test your concepts. So, here the answer will be 1.5. IIT Jam 2023, question number 50. Let pi be the proportion of a population vaccinated against a disease. An estimate of pi hat is 0.64 is found using a sample of 100 individuals from the population. The Z test statistic from the null hypothesis is given by this. 
Okay, so we need to understand that the sample proportion follows a normal distribution with mean pi, which is the population proportion, and the standard deviation, or let me call it the variance, will be 1 pi into 1 minus pi by n. So the sample proportion follows a normal with mean pi and variance pi into 1 minus pi by n. Now, if the null hypothesis is pi is equal to 0.58, whatever be the alternative hypothesis, whether it is pi not equal to greater than less than 0.58, my z uh, statistic will be the same. What will be the z statistic? The sample minus the mean of the normal divided by the standard deviation. Standard deviation is root over pi into 1 minus pi by n. Okay. Now, find out the z value. Now, you should be able to do this. Right, you know the value of pi hat, you know the value of pi, and once you have uh, done this on your own, it will give you immense confidence. You will go a step forward in testing of hypothesis. Okay, so career ye, and I want each of you to take the step who haven't been able to take the step yet. This will give me 0.64 minus 0.58 divided by root over 0.58 into 1 minus 0.58, which is 0.42 divided by n is equal to 100. Now, this gives us approximately 1.2156 something something which I can write to correct to two decimal places as 1.22, which a lot of you have actually shared. So if you put your answer as 1.22, it will be marked correct and you'll get full marks. It's as simple as this. So what was the learning? The learning was the sample proportion. This has been asked in BSC several times, especially in the year 2008, 2007, 2009. It has been asked multiple times. So it is a good idea to even do the DSC questions because they ask you similar questions. IIT is heavily derived from the DSE bit as well. Okay. IIT Jan 2023, question number 51. Uh, industry has three firms in core no competition. They have no fixed cost and then constant marginal costs are respectively this. So, total cost is into Q1, into Q2, into Q3 basically. They take an inverse industry demand which is 1 minus Q. That is the market price Q is the industry output. That is the sum of the output of the three firms. Suppose that QC is the industry output under core no Nash equilibrium. Then QC inverse. So basically what I need to find out is 1 by Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3. This is what I need to find out. Right? So let's go into it. Let's take a look at the profit equation of the first firm. First firm will be 1 minus Q1 minus Q2 minus Q3 into Q1 minus 9 by 30. So derivative is 1 minus 2 Q1 minus Q2 minus Q3 minus 9 by 30 is equal to 0. So I get 2Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3 is equal to 1 minus 9 by 30, which is equal to 21 by 30. Similarly, from the equation of the second form, you will get Q1 plus 2Q2 plus Q3 is equal to 1 minus the cost here is 10 by 30, which is equal to 20 by 30. Basically 2 by 3, but let me write down everything in terms of divide by 30, so that it is easier for us to find out the ultimate answer. You will understand why. And from the third profit equation, we get Q1 plus Q2 plus 2 Q3, 1 minus, now the marginal cost is 11 by 30. So this will be 19 by 30. So I get three equations. 2 Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3 is equal to 21 by 30. Q1 plus 2 Q2 plus Q3 is equal to 20 by 30. Q1 plus Q2 plus 2 Q3 is equal to 19 by 30. If I add all of them, Supposing I add all of them, this plus this plus this, what do I get? 2Q1 plus Q1 plus Q1, 4Q1 plus Q2 plus 2Q2 plus Q2 plus 4Q2 plus Q3 plus Q3 plus 2Q3. 4Q3 is equal to 21 by 30 plus 20 by 30, 41 by 30 plus 19 by 30, 60 by 30, which is equal to 2. Okay, so Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3, if I take 4 common, is equal to 2. So, if I take into account only Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3, this is 2 by 4, which is equal to half. Now, what did I have to find out? I had to find out 1 by Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3. This is where we started off. So, I know Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3 is equal to 1 by 2. So, the inverse of that will give me a simple answer too. This is the answer. IIT Jam 23. A consumer has utility function. This is the utility function. She has some positive income. Y and faces prices P1, P2. Okay. So, first, the utility function ko nikalenge ki kya hai. If x1 is less than x2, min of x1, x2 will be x1. Max will be 0.5 x2. So, 0.5 x2 plus x1 when x1 is less than x2. And this will be 0.5 x1 plus x2 when x1 is greater than x2. Okay. So, this diagram we draw kar sakte hai. एक तो x1 is equal to x2 line ले लेते हैं 
this place x1 is greater than x2 this place x1 is less than x2 so x1 less than x2 is 0.5 x2 plus x1 so the slope is 1 by 0.5 which is 2 2 is the slope and yahan par the slope is 0.5 so yahan par the slope is 2 okay so the slope is half okay now uh, suppose p2 is equal to 1 there exists a lowest price of p1 such that if p1 is greater than p1 bar then the unique utility is to buy only x2 p1 bar is 2 if the price is greater than 2 if the price is greater than 2 then i will consume only at the second good okay we've done this kind of a problem multiple times question number 53 iit jam 23 an economy has three firms every unit of output that x produces creates a benefit of 700 for y and 300 for z firm x is cost curve is this so marginal cost is basically equal to 4q and if i think about the social marginal cost social marginal cost will be basically 4q plus 700 minus 300 so social marginal cost will be 4q plus 400 and regular marginal cost is 4q now if the market price is 1600 this is the regular okay and if the market price is 1600 and if i equate the social marginal cost sorry it's a uh, minus 700 plus 300 This will be minus 400 because it is a benefit. It's not a cost. So this minus 400 here. So this will be 4Q is equal to 2000. Q is equal to 500. The difference between the socially optimal output and the private is 100, I believe. IIT Jam 2023 question number 54. Let integral sine n x cos 11 x dx is equal to cos 10 x f x plus c, where c is a constant. If f double dash pi by 4 minus k f dash pi by 4 equals to zero. we have to find out the value of k all right so let us start with the problem we need to see how the integration has to be done all right so we have integration of sin 9x cos 11x dx okay let's try to split cos 11x first to make our job easy so this will be sin 9x cos 10x plus x dx now we will apply the formula of cos a plus b which is cos a cos b minus sin a sin b so this will become integral sin 9x cos 10x cos x dx plus minus integral sin 9x sin 10x sin x dx we have split this let us try to write it properly so it will be cos 10x sin 9x cos x dx minus sin 10x sin raised to the power 10x dx okay now let us concentrate on this integral let's try to do it using integration by parts so let's take this as your first function and this is your second function so how do we do integration by parts we write first function as it is which is cos 10x then we do integration of the second function which is written as follows minus we differentiate the first function and again we write the integration of the second function okay now let us try to focus on this okay now if in this integral we put sin x equals to t then dt will be cos x dx so this integral sin 9x cos x dx will be t raised to the power 9 dt which is t raised to the power 10 by 10 which is sin raised to the power 10x by 10 okay so this is going to be cos 10x sin raised to the power 10x divided by 10 minus the derivative of cos 10x is minus sin 10x and then we multiply by 10 again this integral is sin 10x by 10 dx okay so this 10 and this 10 gets cancelled so we will have cos 10x sin raised to the power 10x divided by 10 plus integral sin 10x 
sine raised to the power 10 x dx. Now, just look at the beauty of this problem. You see, this is minus of sine 10 x sine raised to the power 10 x dx. Okay. And we have solved this problem. This problem contains the negative of this. You see, plus sine 10 x sine 10 x dx. So, this and this will cancel out. So, my integral, this integral, sine 9 x cos 11 x dx is actually equal to only this term, which is cos 10 x sine raised to the power 10 x upon 10. Okay. Now, if we compare the right hand side with the expression which has been obtained by us, we are going to get fx equals to sine raised to the power 10 x divided by 10. And now we will proceed from here to complete our task. Okay. So now we have fx is equal to sine raised to the power 10 x divided by 10. Let us find the first derivative. f dash x will be 10 sine 9 x d by dx of sine x, which is cos x. And we have 10 in the denominator. So we have f dash pi by 4 equals to sine pi by 4 is 1 upon root 2 whole power 9. Cos pi by 4 is 1 upon root 2. So this is 1 upon root 2 power 10, which is 1 upon 2 power 5, which is 1 upon 32. Okay. Now we go to the second derivative. Okay. So we have f dash x is equal to sine power 9x into cos x. So we again differentiate it using the product rule of derivatives. So f double dash x would be minus sine 9x sine x because derivative of cos x is minus sine x plus and now I keep cos x as it is. So I will get 9 sine 8x cos x and 1 cos x was already there. So f double dash x is equal to minus sine 10x plus 9 sine 8x cos square x. Now you again put the value pi by 4. So it will be minus 1 upon root 2 whole power 10 plus 9. This is 1 upon root 2 whole power 8, 1 upon root 2 whole power 2. So this will be minus 1 upon root 2 power 10 plus 9, 1 upon root 2 power 10, which is 8, 1 upon root 2 power 10, which is 8 by 32. Okay, so I have the value of f dash pi by 4. I have the value of f double dash pi by 4. All right. So now I have this equation and from this equation, we will get the value of k. Let's try to find it out. Okay, so we will have 8 by 32 minus k times 1 by 32 equals to 0. This would mean k by 32 equals to 8 by 32 and this would mean k is equal to 8. So the value of k is 8. So we've done the problem. This IIT Jam 2023, question number 55, m is equal to k11, 1k1, 11k. Let I3 be the identity matrix of order 3. If the rank of 10 I3 minus M is 2, then what is the value of K? Let's go ahead and see this. So, M is K11, 1K1, 11K. This is what it is, right? Okay. 10 I3 minus M. 10 I3 minus M. Okay. Now, the rank of this is equal to 2. That means that the determinant value of 10 I3 minus M is equal to 0. Okay. I basically do column 1 plus column 2 plus column 3. If I add all the three columns, I'll get uh, 8 minus K, 8 minus K, 8 minus K. Take 8 minus K common. Then I basically do column 1 plus column 2. So what will I get? I'll get uh, 0, 11 minus k, 0. Okay. I expand by the first column. So k minus 11 because I will do a minus 1. Uh, minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, 10 minus k. 8 minus k is here, 8 minus k is here. Uh, A minus 10 minus 1. Okay. This will basically give me 8 minus k into k minus 11 whole square. 
So 8 minus k into k minus 11 square is the determinant value of 10 i3 minus m. Now this has to be equal to 0 for it to have a rank of less than 3. So rank less than 3. So that means that k is either equal to 8 or 11. But there is only one uh, answer. So how can there be two answers? For k is equal to 11, let's see what will happen. For k is equal to 11, what will be 10 i3 minus m? Just put it here. Then i3 minus m will be this if k is equal to 11. This will basically mean rank is equal to 1 because all the rows and all the columns are the same. So the number of linearly independent rows for k is equal to 11, the rank is 1 because the number of linearly independent rows slash columns is equal to only 1. So if the number of linearly independent rows or columns is equal to only 1, that means that the rank is equal to 1. So for k is equal to 11, rank is 1. It's already given to us in the question that rank is equal to 2. If the rank of the matrix is 2, so the rank is equal to 2 is only possible for k is equal to 8. k is equal to 11, most of you have given me that as the answer. Please understand, k is equal to 11 will give me a rank of 1. 10 i3 minus m will have a rank of 1, not 2. It's already mentioned in the problem that the rank is 2. So what is the answer? What is the value of k then? It's equal to 8. Jam 2023, question number 56. In a two-period model, a consumer is maximizing present discounted utility. This is a utility function subject to the budget constraint. This is the budget constraint. Okay, where C i and y are the consumption in period i, respectively theta is belonging to 0 to infinity, r is belonging to 0 to infinity, is the rate of interest and theta is the time discount. Suppose the consumer is in the interior equilibrium, that means that I need to equate slope of utility function with the slope of the budget line. Okay, theta is equal to 0 0.05 and r is equal to 0 0.08. Okay, so basically marginal utility marginal utility t plus 1 is equal to the slope of the budget line. Now the slope of this intertemporal choice budget line is always 1 plus r. I'm talking about the absolute slope. So basically the slope is 1 plus r and I need to equate this with 1 plus r. Now this is basically 1 by ct by 1 by 1 plus theta into ct plus 1 is equal to 1 plus r. So ultimately what will I get? I'll get ct plus 1 into 1 plus theta by ct is equal to 1 plus r. Or in other words, what do we get from here? is ct plus 1 by ct is equal to 1 plus r by 1 plus theta. So that's r is equal to 0 0.08, so 1.08 divided by theta is equal to 0 0.05. 1.08 by 1.05 is what you need to do, and you will get 1.028 something. If I need to round it off to two decimal places, this will be approximately equal to 1.03. And this will be my answer here. I'll use a different color. The answer is 1.03. Jam 2023, question number 57. Let's take a look at the question. The portfolio as an investment firm comprises of two risky assets, s &T, whose returns are denoted by the random variables RS and RT. The mean variance and covariance are given as follows. Let W be the proportion of assets allocated to S so that the return from the portfolio is R is equal to WRS plus 1 minus W into RT. The value of W which minimizes variance R. So firstly, we need to find out what is our variance R. So variance R is basically variance WRS plus 1 minus WRT. Okay, so that basically gives me W square variance RS plus 1 minus W square variance RT plus 2W into 1 minus W covariance RS RT. Okay, now we can put in the values. So this is basically W square variance RS is 0 0.07 plus 1 minus W square can be written as W minus 1 square. It's the same thing because it's square anyway. Variance RT is 0 0.05 plus 2W into 1 minus W. Covariance RS RT is 0 0.04. Okay, so this is what my variance R is. Now, the value of W which minimizes variance R. So which minimizes variance R, we need to basically differentiate. So DV 
dW is what we need to do. So if we differentiate, what do we find? 2W into 0 0.07 plus 2W minus 1 into 0 0.05 plus 2 into 0 0.04 is 0 0.08. 0 0.08. Derivative of this is 1 minus 2W. First order condition equal to 0. So 0 0.14W plus 2W into 0 0.05. So plus 0 0.10W minus 0 0.10 plus 0 0.08 minus 0.16 w so 0.14 plus 0 0.10 minus 0.16 is equal to 0 0.1 minus 0 0.08 okay so this is now equal to 0 0.24 0 0.08 w So the value of W that will minimize variance RT will be 0.25, put your answer. You can also verify that the second order condition will be positive. Look at this. I have uh, W as 0 0.08 W ultimately. So if you write down D2, you get 0 0.08, which is positive, implying that the W value that I got from the first order condition, this has to be minimizing the value of the variance of R. So the answer verified is 0.25. Jam 2023, question number 58. The number X is randomly chosen from the first set of 100 natural numbers. The probability that X satisfies this condition. This is the condition that X has to satisfy. So let's just put it here. X square plus 300 by X greater than 65. Since X is randomly chosen from the set of first 100 natural numbers, x has to be positive. So I can take x on the other side without affecting the equality sign. So I'll get, this is 65 obviously. Middle term factorization. x minus 60 into x minus 5 greater than 0. So basically, 1 to 100, one is 5, the other is 60. So when is this inequality greater than 0? This will be greater than 0 when x is less than 5 or when x is greater than 60. Okay. So the answer is 1, 2, 3, 4 and 61, 62 up to 100. Okay. So here I have 40 terms which will basically satisfy this inequality and here I have 4 terms which will satisfy this inequality. So total 44 terms are there or 44 values of x are there which will satisfy this condition. Okay. 44 numbers out of the first 100 natural numbers. So that gives me a probability of 0 0.44. So what is the probability that x satisfies this condition? This is the answer 0 0.44. IIT Jam 2023, question number 59. Let k belong to real number. Let fx be equal to this. If x is equal to 3 by 2 is a point of local minima of f and m is the global minimum value of f, find out the value of f0 minus m. Okay, let's go on the whiteboard understanding how to do this. We have an fx value which is x to the power 4 plus 2x cubed plus kx square minus k. This is what we have, right? Yeah. Now x is real and k is also real. That's given. x takes any real value, k takes any real value. It's given to us that x is equal to 3 by 2 is a local minima. Now, in order for this to be a local minima, f dash has to be equal to 0 for x is equal to 3 by 2. So what is my f dash? f dash is basically 4x cubed plus 6x square plus 2kx. Okay. Right now, this can be easily written as 2x common, 2x square plus 3x plus k. Right now, um, f dash has to be equal to 0 for a maximum minima or a point of inflection. Okay, now x is equal to 0 is definitely one of the values for which this is equal to 0, and x is equal to 3 by 2 is also a value for which this is equal to 0. So, let's try to find out what is f dash at 3 by 2. Okay, f dash at 3 by 2. Let's try and find out. Basically, what will happen is, 
this 2x square plus 3x plus k, this is equal to 0 for f for x is equal to 3 by 2. 2 into 3 by 2 is 9 by 4. 3 into 3 by 2 is 9 by 2 plus k. This is equal to 0. So x is equal to 0. So x is equal to 3 by 2 will come from only this area. So this part should be equal to 0 for x is equal to 3 by 2. Right? This will happen in terms of a middle term factorization. Understand that. So from here I'll get 9 by 2 plus 9 by 2 is 9. 9 plus k is equal to 0. This is what most of you have got. k is equal to minus 9. Agreed? Anyone who has not got k is equal to uh, minus 9, you would have only made a calculation mistake. Okay? Because this, I think, around 90% of you have got. Right? Okay? k is equal to minus 9. Ye padav tak aapko samaj mein aya hai. Okay? k is equal to minus 9. You are with me till here. Okay. Great. Now, from here, we are able to do a middle term. 2x square plus 3x minus 9. Now, what kind of a middle term will I get here? 2x square, 2 into 9 is minus 18, 2 into uh, minus 9 is minus 18. So this will be plus 6x minus 3x. 6 into 3 is also minus 18. So 2x common, x plus 3, minus 3 common, x plus 3. So this will basically become x plus 3 into 2x minus 3. So ultimately, what can be written? My f is basically now x4 plus 2x cubed minus 9x square plus 9. This is what my function becomes. Just put k is equal to minus 9 here. Okay. And my f dash therefore becomes 2x into 2x square plus 3x minus 9. Now this is basically 2x into x plus 3 into 2x minus 3. Correct? This is my f dash. F is this and my F dash is this. I'm simply putting in the value of K. How is K equal to minus 9? I have done it from here. F dash has to be equal to 0 for X is equal to 3 by 2. Now, 2X into this. So, X is equal to uh, 3 by 2 will come from middle term factorization of this part. 2X square plus 3X plus K. So, this part has to be equal to 0 for X is equal to 3 by 2. So, I'm just putting that here. I get the value of K. Put in the value of K and I get the other X value. So, one of the root I have got X is equal to uh, 3 by 2, but I have not yet got the other root. The other root is basically, so for f dash is equal to 0, I get 3 values. x is equal to 0, x is equal to minus 3, and x is equal to 3 by 2. Correct? Now, as most of you have given me the green signal, let's try and understand how to graph this. So f dash has basically 3 parts where the signs will change. Okay? One part is at x is equal to 0. So if x is, I'll just put 0 here. I'll put, uh, sorry, I have a minus 3 as well. So I need to be wary of that. x is equal to minus 3, x is equal to 0, and x is equal to 3 by 2. There are three parts to it. Okay. x is equal to minus 3 and below. So below minus 3, x is negative. x plus 3 is also negative. 2x minus 3 is also negative. All of them are negative. Three negatives gives me what value? Is it a negative value or a positive value? Three negatives give me a negative value or a positive value? It gives me a negative value. So below minus 3, f dash has to be negative. Can I write that? So x less than minus 3, f dash is negative. That is the function is decreasing. x is between minus 3 to 0. x is between minus 3 to 0. This becomes positive. The remaining two becomes are yet negative. x below 3 by 2, this will be negative. x below 0, this will be negative. Negative, positive, negative. If I multiply this, it will give me a positive or a negative number. It will give me a positive or a negative number. Please try and follow this 100%. Purana, aapko kya nahi aaya samaj mein, uske baare mein bhool jaiye, to ye bhi follow nahi kar paayenge. Okay? Just concentrate, f dash is this. f dash is this. So, 2x into x plus 3 into 2x minus 3. Okay? Below minus 3. All of them will be negative. Let me write it down in this particular fashion. I think that will be better. Most of you will be able to understand this in a better fashion. Some of you are getting confused. Most of you have understood. Some of you are getting confused x plus 3, ye pehla root of minus 3, ye second root of x is equal to 0, and this is the third root of x is equal to 3 by 2. So, below minus 3, all of them are negative. Hence, f dash is negative. f dash negative ka matlab hai, it is a decreasing function between minus 3 and 0. This is positive, the other two negative. f dash is positive. If f dash is positive, what will happen? It will increase. Okay, so below minus 3 f dash negative, the function is decreasing. Between minus 3 and 0, f dash is positive, the function is increasing. 
okay between 0 to 3 by 2 these two are positive this is negative so overall again f dash will be negative so again i have a decreasing and greater than 3 by 2 all of them are positive again f dash is increasing some of you were doubtful sir kaise graph karenge isn't it easy now some of you might ask me sir ye aapko kaise pata hai ki minus uh, 3 mein it will be a negative one 0 pe it will be a positive one 3 by 2 pe it will be a positive one i don't know maine roughly draw isko kiya hai put in the value of minus 3 here verify ki wo negative hai okay the whether it is negative or positive it can be anywhere but the shape of the graph remains this shape is this forget about the absolute value the values i will put but the shape of the graph will be like this theek hai below minus uh, 3 it will be decreasing minus 3 to 0 ke beech mein it will be increasing 0 to 3 by 2 it will be decreasing 3 by 2 and above it will be increasing okay how do you know that it is lower at minus uh, uh, 3 instead of 3 by 2 put it in the value of f that is how you will be able to verify it aur koi tarika nahi hai this f dash approach will only give me how to find out the kahan par wo decreasing hai kahan par wo increasing hai where the function is falling where the function is increasing the f dash thing will only give me that okay what is the value of f at minus 3 find it out like f at minus 3 find it out minus 3 to the power 4 is 81 minus 3 cube is 27 27 into 2 is 54 x square is 9 9 into 9 is 81 so minus 81 plus 9 so the answer is minus 45 this is what the value is okay at f 3 by 2 what is the value 3 by 2 to the power 4 plus 2 into 3 by 2 cube minus 9 into 3 by 2 square plus 9 okay 9 into 9 is 81 81 by 4 81 by 4 this has to be a this is approximately equal to 0 slightly positive you will get slightly positive but i think very very minutely but it's nowhere close to minus 5 will you not agree it's nowhere close to minus 5 and f0 is a very easy value to find out just put x is equal to 0 here x is equal to 0 f0 is 9 so this is definitely 9 this is minus 45 this is 9 and this value is something which is barely positive very close to 0 0.5625 so i was right it's approximately 0 so 0 0.56 wow i was quite accurate okay 0 0.56 approximately that is what you will get at 3 by 2 so one thing is for certain the global minima is minus 45 so some of you were actually uh, uh, wondering that just by looking at f dash how can you say that x is equal to minus 3 is a global minima you cannot you will have to graph it you will have to exactly see the values then only can you comment otherwise aap nahi bol sakte nahi bol sakte you cannot so i get the global minima m was the global minima m is equal to minus 45 f0 is equal to 9 is this okay f0 is equal to 9 global minima value is minus 45 right there is a point in graphing it you are missing the point the point is that you will have to ensure that this is decreasing then it is increasing therefore this is giving me a value which is a minima value then this is a local maxima value then again i get a local minima value you will have to ensure that this has to be the lowest point nowhere else can i get a lower value than that right so see the point is if i get a graph like this right will you say that this is the global minima the answer is there is no global minima or i may have a function like this then this will become the global minima okay so you will have to graph it in order to understand what is the global what is the local minima m is the global minima value f not minus m is what we need to find out so f not minus m so 9 minus of minus 45 will give me 54 okay put in the answer here 54 see ultimately you will have to graph mark my words you will have to graph maybe not in this question but in some other question you will have to learn how to graph 100 percent especially in the quadratic and the polynomial okay so being averse to graphing sir graphing ke bina nahi kar sakte graphing ke bina kar sakte hain kariye 
ठीक है मे बी दिस पर्टिकुलर प्रॉब्लम यू आर बींग एबल टू टेक इट आउट विदाउट ग्राफिंग ठीक है अगले प्रॉब्लम में आप अटक जाएंगे देन वॉट देन वॉट ग्राफिंग इज द फुल प्रूफ मेथड ओके प्लीज 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 लेट्स नॉट क्वेश्चन दिस लर्न हाउ टू ग्राफ एक्सट्रीमली इंपॉर्टेंट ओके ग्राफिंग को सीखना जरूरी है इसको अपने दिमाग में बैठा लीजिए ओके हियर यू कैन पुट इन द वैल्यूज एंड चेक यू कैन ऑल्सो फाइंड आउट द डबल डेरेवेटिव एंड चेक यू कैन यू कैन यू कैन इंश्योर दैट माइनस थ्री इज अ ग्लोबल मिनिमा वैल्यू ठीक है इट कैन टेक यू अ लिटिल बिट लॉन्गर इन ऑर्डर टू डू इट ठीक है इट्स ओके बट यू विल हैव टू लर्न हाउ टू ग्राफ ओके गॉट इट सी इन ऑर्डर टू इंश्योर दैट you get to your uh, dream institute i don't want you to leave any stone unturned it's as simple as that har ek concept aapko aana chahiye okay so here the answer is 54 this is uh, iit jam 2023 question number 60 let's take a look at the function 100 minus e to the power minus x minus e to the power minus y so we need to maximize this okay and um, we'll take a look at the constraint as well f x y 100 minus e to the power minus x minus e to the power minus y. Now, if I treat this as a utility function and I want to find out the indifference curves, or if I want to find out the level curves, what will I do? I'll uh, basically differentiate this entirely. Take this as a constant, say u bar. If I differentiate this, it will be zero zero. This will be um, plus e to the power minus x plus e to the power minus y dy dx. So basically, what do I get? I get dy by dx is equal to minus of e to the power minus x by e to the power minus y. Okay, or in other words, what will I get? I'll get uh, minus of e to the power minus x plus y, or minus of e to the power y minus x. Let's find out my d2 y dx2. D2 y dx2 is basically minus e to the power min y minus x into dy by dx minus one. Okay, minus e to the power y minus x dy by dx is basically uh, minus of e to the power y minus x again minus one. This will make it plus. This is plus because this is negative. This is also negative. So overall, this entire expression will be positive. That would mean indifference curves are convex. So this is about just understanding how the level curves will look for this particular function, which I want to maximize. Okay. So this function, if I want to maximize. and if i want to find out the level curves for this it will be convex and subject to ex plus y is equal to e by e minus 1 a constraint is so the constraint itself is very easy it's basically it's basically a straight line okay um if y is equal to 0 this will be 1 by e minus 1 and this is basically e by e minus 1 Okay, and this hundred minus e to the power x minus one by e to the power y. This will be convex, so it, the level curves will look something like this. Now, if I have to maximize this, it's very clear. What do I need to do? I need to find out the tangency solution. That is, I need to equate the slope of the level curve with the slope of this constraint. So it's like maximizing a utility function subject to a budget constraint. This is the budget constraint. That is the utility function. I compare the two slopes. The slope of the budget line is basically minus e, or the slope of the constraint is minus e, and the slope of this we have already found out is basically minus e to the power y minus x becomes plus. And what do I get? I basically get that uh, y minus x is equal to one, or y is equal to x plus one. Okay. Now if y is equal to x plus one, just put it there. Um, Y is equal to x plus one, e x plus plus one, e by e minus one, e plus one is equal to e minus e plus one by e minus one. Taking this plus one on the other side as minus one, we get this. X is basically one by e square minus one, and y is basically one plus x. So y by x is basically e square. Root over y by x is e. E is approximately two point seven two something. So if I write the answer as two point seven two, it will be correct. Basically, the answer is e. So we mark the answer here as two point seven two. Round off to two decimal places.